How y'all doing today? Great. Uh, my name is Victor Haskins, and today I want to talk to you about how improvisation is a vital part of our lives. And I hope that you will consider or reconsider the power and role of improvisation in your life or professional workplace. So I want to do that and relate that to you through my expertise, which is music. And so we use three different vehicles of improvisation, a tune, a motif, and an abstract idea. And we'll get to those as we, as we come to them. So the first is a tune, and I'll explain to you what I'm doing after I finish it. So hopefully we'll all recognize this tune. Okay, so what, what exactly was I doing? I was taking a tune that we all know, Three Blind Mice, and I was taking the melody and using my imagination and some other outside elements to manipulate the rhythms of the, the original melody, Three Blind Mice, over the structure of the tune. All right, so no matter what, I'm still playing the tune. With all the things I'm adding and taking away and, and changing how I'm saying it, the rhythms, the articulations, I'm still playing this tune. And so maybe in a non-musical context, we can relate this to baking a cake. If someone were to say to me, play Three by Mice and improvise, it would be the same as me coming up to someone saying, bake me a cake. Well, that's kind of a, a specific task that they're asking you to do, to create a cake that's hopefully edible. But, um, a cake, there's so many different kinds of cakes you can make. You can make a flourless chocolate cake. You can make a, a carrot cake. You can make a pound cake. But they're all types of cakes. And so when I'm improvising on a tune, the tune stands as it is, three blind mice. But within that tune, there's so much I can do by manipulating different specific elements. And so the next level of taking this, this improvisational idea is taking more freedom when you're improvising. So first I'm using a tune that has a defined structure and a full melody. And next I'm going to use a motif. And a motif, uh, like in literature, is an idea or a pattern, something that recurs throughout a story, because that's what all music is, is telling a story. Um, and it's, it's using a common thread that keeps reoccurring, like in Three Little Pigs. What's the motif? Making bad decisions. The first pig makes his house out of straw, second pig out of wood, and the third pig decides I'll make it out of brick. So you have that motif, and because the first one makes a bad decision, the second one makes a bad decision, the third one 
doesn't make a bad decision. That's how the logic of the story comes together. And so a similar sort of approach can be applied to music. So I'll take a motif, a musical idea, and I will create an improvisation, a spontaneous composition from just that. Here's the motif. <laughs> I play that motif? A lot. Okay, right. I wasn't counting it. But the idea is that I'm creating this storyline. I'm creating this character. Say the motif is a character in a story, right? And I'm creating this development. And through how I'm manipulating those rhythms, there becomes greater intensity, and then there becomes a climax, and then the story ends. So through all these elements that I'm incorporating, I'm taking these small elements and creating a, a, a structure of my own. So you could relate this to baking a cake once again. But instead of me saying, bake a cake, I might say, here is flour, sugar, butter, eggs, and bake something. Right? So that's what I just do with that motif. You gave me the tools or he gave me the ingredients, and now I have to create a product. But what can you do with those ingredients now? Depending on what other ingredients you add, you can create quiche, you can create pancakes, you can create pizza dough. So there's so many more possibilities, but if you realize we, we still have to follow certain rules within that. We still have to bake the ingredients, otherwise we have raw eggs and whatever we're making, right? And so the same thing happens with music. I don't just... I'm not just randomly putting things together. I'm intuitively creating a story. And so I have to create a structure. Even though there's no uh, traditional structure, like in Three Blind Mice, there is a structure that has to be created that I have to feel to create this arc, this story. And so we could take those same elements and move it to a step beyond. A little more creativity, a little more power, as Uncle Ben in Spider-Man said, with great power comes great responsibility. So now we're going to take a little bit more creativity and add a little bit more to it. Let's take no idea, no musical concrete beginning point. And so let me have an adjective. Anyone give me an adjective from the audience. What is it, spicy? Someone said spicy? Okay, spicy, give me a noun. Spicy chicken. Okay. Okay, I see we just had lunch, so we're going to go with spicy chicken. All right. 
So I'm going to take all these elements I've just been talking about, organization, the outside knowledge and imagination I have, and this idea of a story, and I'm going to put them together to create an improvisation out of basically nothing. I have to figure out how I'm going to play <laughs> spicy chicken. <laughs> Exactly how did how did I interpret spicy chicken? Well, I ate the chicken. It was good, but it was spicy. And so, depending on how I feel about that, I'm trying to put together this story on such a, a, a small topic of how did I feel about that chicken? How did the chicken affect me? Right? So that's what I'm doing with all those elements. Now let's take this third vehicle of improvisation and let's relate it to not cake, but something more common to our lives, improvising, talking, conversation. That is the most universally practiced form of improvisation that we all do. And how is this done? What is improvisation? Improvisation is creating something in the moment from something that is there, creating something new from something old, right? I don't just pull notes out of nowhere to, to play it, I have to feel it. It has to intuitively come to me. So even while I'm improvising for you guys by myself, I'm still thinking about what I just played and where the story has to go to be complete. How do I tell this complete story? When you're talking to someone, and I know we've all done this, when you've talked to someone who is thinking about what they're going to say next and they're not listening to what you're saying, the conversation goes nowhere. It's boring. You know they're not listening to you. When you have conversations to improvise the most effectively, you have to listen to what they're saying. You have to listen in order to respond. Respond effectively and respond in the context of what you're talking about. So when I'm playing this composition you had me play, Spicy Chicken, I'm thinking, how do I communicate that feeling, that emotion? Right? There's a lot of, certainly there's a lot of technical elements that are going into what I'm doing. But that's not, it's not me showing off, oh, look, I can play trumpet. It's, this is how this makes me feel. And these are all the details of it. So, how do we improvise? How do we get to an, a, a point where we can improvise in whatever it is we're doing, whether it's talking or music? You have to have mastery of the skills that are involved in your craft or whatever you're, you're improvising. You have to have an innate sense of organization because how do you know where you're going to go if you don't know where you've been, if you don't know what the other person said, how do you respond, right? You can't have a conversation unless you're both involved or 
if you're improvising like I am, you have to know what are the elements of a good story. So, and of course you have to have intuition, you have to feel it. There's no mathematical formula that makes a composition or that makes a, a story happen. And so, I challenge all of us to, the next time you have a conversation or the next time you have the opportunity to improvise, to take it because it takes things that are mundane and boring, like three blind mice, and turns it into something new and exciting. I mean, think about how useful that is for someone like me, a musician, to be able to create such original and personal music out of little to no information. It's incredibly useful and incredibly rewarding to be able to do that and to make that connection to people through my imagination. And so the next time you're having a conversation, listen a little deeper, and the next time you do anything, just try to figure out where you can insert yourself and improvise, because it'll, it'll certainly make life a little more exciting. Thank you.